Okay, in previous videos, I was looking at a lot of the graph uh, uh, menu options. For example, histogram, box plot. I had a look at bar plots and uh, by, uh, bar charts and pie charts earlier on. Okay, now I'm going to go back to stat and work here for a while. Okay, and what I'm particularly interested in now is down here. So I had a look at earlier on at displaying descriptive statistics. I'm going to go down to this option here, graphical summary. Okay, so let's just click on that. Okay, and what I'm going to do is just pick out, I was working with volume. I'll tell you what, I'll stick with volume here for the time being. And I'm just going to pick, click OK here. And let's see what happens. Okay. So what we have here is uh, quite a dense statistical summary, okay? Now, I had a look at a few things here already, okay? And I sort of was just talking about the individual components of this in the, in the previous video. But essentially what I have here is a histogram, okay? Okay. And what we have on this histogram is a normal probability plot or normal probability curve superimposed on it just to sort of see if the normal distribution was the correct way of looking at this data would this would this be the overall shape the answer is not really essentially what this question uh, the, the point of this red line is this bell curve is trying to sort of talk about is um, is this data normally distributed and if it does it would look like this but does our histogram look like that, or do, does our does does our bar plots, our our, uh, our columns, our bars fit up with that alignment? Not really. Okay. Also, what we have here is just going back here is the you just reading that little um, where I have it I had there. It was the normal mean, which would be six to the power of six by ten to the power of seven, and a variance of oh I don't know big number anyway uh, 4.1148 that's the mean and variance I think that's variance it could be standard deviation I'm not sure it's not a uh, crucial issue just underneath it we have the uh, box plot now I love the way that his this um, lines up the box plots and the um, histogram so they're right underneath each other I love that essentially you get more uh, information out of both than you do uh, have at uh, looking at them individually. Okay, down here we have confidence intervals. I'm going to leave that confidence interval stuff for the time being, but just to sort of say that the mean is this is a confidence interval for the mean. Okay, now really what this 95% confidence interval for the mean is, I'm not going to explain what it is, but actually just in the the, cure, the interesting thing about it is that it does not align with the 95% confidence interval for the median. Okay, so that's that's. Uh, by the way, they're not in the same axis as this. They're sort of separate. Uh, they're sort of separate down here. Okay, it doesn't align very well with them. Uh, they don't align very well with each other. Okay, that's just some. That, that's the key takeaway. Now, up here on the right-hand side, we have some of the uh, summary statistics, like the mean, standard deviation, variance. Skewness and kurtosis are actually quite interesting. Okay, we'll talk about them later on. Uh, N is just actually the number of items in the data set. It's the sample size, essentially. Okay, the f minimum, first quartile, median, third quartile, maximum. That's what they call the Tukey five-number summary quite interesting. Over here we have the 95% uh, confidence interval for the mean and the median. So they, th th those are the numbers that sort of define this range down here. Okay. There's also the 95% confidence interval for the standard deviation. That's not, um, not nothing we're going to use uh, right now. Now something I've sort of skipped over up here is the Anderson-Darling normality test. This is a really interesting, okay? Now, essentially what we want to do is assess, is this data set volume normally distributed? Okay, so this is what the Anderson-Darling test sets out to sort of try and sort of give you an answer to. 
is there enough evidence to say that this data set is not normally distributed? Now, I'm not going to get into this yet because essentially what we have to do is decide what uh, you know what hypothesis hypothesis testing is. But as far as my sort of um, series of videos is concerned, this is in a, in a milestone. It's the <clears throat> the first time we see this thing called a p-value, okay? And it's essentially it's less than 0.05 percent. Okay, we don't really know how to interpret that yet, but it's actually it's just a very interesting result. The whole point of the Anderson-Darling test is to decide, is there enough evidence to say that the data set is not normally distributed? There's a lot to take in there, so I won't do it right now. So anyway, essentially the key thing we've sort of learned right now is this, it's a fabulous, um, nice, concise uh, bit of information. And uh, I'm just going to undo it there. Okay, about a variable. So I'm just going to sort of go back to this now. Basic statistics, graphical summary. Let's just throw in a few more there. Open, select that. Select. Select. Okay, we'll just go with those three there. Well, by the way, you sort of seen earlier on, we sort of said we were looking at a 95% confidence interval. Let's change that to 99 just to see if we get something different. Click OK. And give it a second there. So we have one, two, three now. So essentially we had summary um, summary uh, reports for each of the three variables that I, so one for each of them. So if you're copying, you can copy and paste this and put it in a report. For example, uh, copy a pen to uh, send graph to Microsoft Word. You know, just stick it in the report. Okay, let's close that one down. That's low, high. Get rid of that one. We'll just close that one down there for a second. Just, uh, again, in most cases, they are pretty similar. We're just looking at the same sort of things here. And uh, you know, does the 99% confidence interval match up with? Do they? You know, are they sort of lined up with each other? Not really. Nope. There we go. Same again. Um, yeah. So that's um, summary reports. And it's just essentially a nice way of bundling up all of the key uh, descriptive statistics into a nice single simple report. Okay, so ha and again, how do we do that? We go to stat. And remember, it's stat, not graph. And I just made that mistake there myself. Graphical summary. So stat, basic statistics, graphical summary. Okay, that's the end of that one.